Enzo Fernandez has upgraded personal terms with Chelsea. Then Lionel Messi is just a moment away from extending his contract with PSG because the pact they have has really driven them to agree on everything and I think one more meeting is left to really see this deal happen. And lastly, we are going to do a little bit of Cody Gapko and why he never and, and why he was never of that Liverpool team squad yesterday. Liverpool has confirmed today they've signed up the player and all the nitty gritties have been sorted and now he's a fully registered Liverpool player. Welcome to Rokani Media Football. How are you guys and where are you watching us from? Third day of 2023 and don't forget to say a prayer and ask Lord what you want because we'll give you whatever you guys want. Now, Rokan David is my name and obviously let's get into this. Smash the like button, don't forget to subscribe. Fabrizio Romano, you know he's the guru of all transfers. He has confirmed us that Chelsea have been insisting also today with Benfica in order to find a solution for Enzo Fernandez deal. This week will be absolutely crucial waiting for Rui Costa to decide Fernandez has had full agreement on personal terms with Chelsea since last week. So personal terms between Chelsea and Enzo Fernandez's agent have been come to a compromise. Everything has been said hard. Enzo Fernandez to Chelsea looks like it's just a matter of days or hours to see it happening any time from now. Now, to me, I believe these are mistakes Chelsea make according to me. You see, when you are falling into a pit hole, when you see a rope, that's what you're supposed to hold on, not a reed. You get now, tell us you're going in through to sign Buddy Shield, to sign for Fana, to sign Santos. I saw all that as holding yourself onto the lead, the reed, yet there is a rope that can really get you up back. Why they need a solution to their midfield. Ezo Fernandez is the right player to come in and revolutionize their midfield and give them a new feel and obviously a breath of fresh air in that midfield because they are lacking control of that midfield. However, much Jorginho is really good at the ball, but I believe his progressive game is really lacking. He's a very good pass of the ball, but I hate it when I see how he plays for Chelsea because it looks like he's no longer that Jorginho we used to see. And you see Jorginho and Fabinho have gone ahead to drop off, but Casemiro and Pedri have gone ahead to raise their bar so high, the likes of Quesido, the likes of Thomas Partey. You get, you cannot put, you cannot put, you cannot put Jorginho and Fabinho in the best, I think, six CDMs in the world, sorry, the Premier League, yet the past two three seasons it was really 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 very very hard not to include them but i believe they've dropped off so i believe enzo fernandez would have been the first signing for chelsea according to me they would have gone ahead to bring him in immediately however much these other deals they've made are really of cheaper money for fana 12 12 million pounds i think then there is santos eight uh buddy shield it's going to be like 30 but I believe the most important deal is that of Enzo Fernandez. And if at all they pull it up, they would have really solved one of their biggest problems in the midfield because Zakaria came in through but is not yet Premier League ready and is getting to the Premier League, getting used to the Premier League. But I believe he's going to go on and really help him a lot. That is Graham Potter. But Enzo Fernandez is really great. He can play as a central midfielder. He can play as a box-to-box -box midfielder. He can play as a CDM. So this guy... Is really talented and it's what Chelsea are needing and I believe they should really accelerate this deal to happen. Now today, Fabrice has confirmed us that Enzo Fernandez back to training today as as per a baller, a baller in Portugal. Exclusive picks are showing, as shown here, but Enzo has been clear for days he wants Chelsea while the two clubs will be in direct contact in the, 24, in the next 24 to 48 hours to find an agreement. Still waiting for Ricosta to make a decision. Ricosta is the, like, is the CEO of Benefica who really makes the final decisions on who is to leave and who is going where because they thought that no club would come in through to buy Enzo Fernandez in January for 130 million euros. But what he showed up at the World Cup and winning 
the award of the young the youngest best player of the world cup has put him into quotation to leave and united also wanted the player but they never had the money so chelsea a hundred percent in for the player called enzo fernandez he wants to join the club known as chelsea and he doesn't want to miss out on this opportunity because opportunity knocks once at every money's door so that is all what that is all we had about Enzo Fernandez. But personal terms have been agreed in between him and in between him and Chelsea. So anytime from now, you might see him unveiled as a Chelsea player. Now the Anfield watch has gone ahead to confirm us via the Liverpool website that confirmed Cody Gapko is officially a Liverpool player after the formalities of his transfer from PSV and Heaven were successfully concluded on Tuesday. That is today. They tell us. The 23-year-old is now officially registered with the Reds and able to begin work with his new club. A deal to sign Cody Gapko from PSV was announced on December 28th. Now, that means there are some nitty-gritties that saw this guy not play the game they lost to Brentford yesterday. I believe if at all everything was done, I mean the paperwork, and fully registered with the Premier League, he would have played that game yesterday because Liverpool looked shy of his services especially the final third but thank god he's here but he's coming in when they've already lost so let's see how they're going to play over the weekend in the fa cup as we see their next moves in the field but Cody Gapko is really a very good player that is really going to do wonders for liverpool according to me he's really great he's really great i like him and i believe those chances that doing Nunes is missing he's going to come out and really capitalize on adding another source of goals for liverpool especially coming in from the wide areas and yesterday i saw doing Nunes leaning a lot onto the left the left wide area and i was asking myself why should the center forward lean a lot into that area you get i believe doing Nunes should be playing centrally and the player called Cody Gapko will come in and really offload him that lord that is having everyone asking goals from him because if 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 salah was scoring in goals no one would have minded about doe nunes but salah is not scoring goals uh and it's salah who is really creating for doe nunes doe nunes is not banging those by the back of the net so he still has a long way to go at a club called liverpool but Gapko is coming in to rescue him and I believe the rescue is really going to be fully done and dusted when Cody Gapko starts to play for Liverpool on the weekend in the FA Cup. Now, Fabrizio Roman has confirmed us that Lionel Messi and Paris Saint-Germain have verbal pact to continue together. There will be a new meeting with his camp to discuss length of contract, salary, and more. Nothing signed this week. No rush as the plan is already clear. Messi will continue in Paris. So, no worries for Lionel Messi. He's going to continue in Paris. And PSG need him. You know, after getting a player who has won the World Cup, you would love to keep him. Why do you want to keep him? Chances of him winning the Ballon d'Or are really huge. And Messi winning a Ballon d'Or for PSG, I think would have become the first player to win it ever since ever since George Ware because George Ware won the Ballon d'Or when he was playing for PSG PSG AC Milan I think was playing for PSG that's when he won it so they would like to put that onto their history that we now have a Ballon d'Or winner now the task ahead of PSG is really hard they are having two players that hate one another trust me there is bad blood between Messi and Kylian Mbappe because Kylian Mbappe has a big ego, looks like he has achieved it and is going to be the next goat. Messi believes he has some football left in his legs. He showcases the World Cup. Everyone no longer argues that who the goat is for this generation. Obviously, Messi went ahead to out-debate Ronaldo and Messi is the only pillar left into this conversation. So, Mbappe wants to leave PSG. So, they don't want to lose their stars at once. At least when Mbappe goes, you have to keep Lionel Messi. How do you keep Lionel Messi? Discuss a new contract with him because he signed a two-year contract with PSG. Now keep him at the club and see what's going to happen. So let's see what's going to unfold from that. But they're really having a very tricky season ahead of themselves because they are drawn against Bayern Munich at the round of 16. That's it. PSG versus Bayern Munich, Champions League round of 16 that's what they are going to do so you need Messi you need Mbappe 
to be with you and obviously Neymar to complement those two in a front three that could really knock out Bayern Munich for the very first time at the round of 16 because most of the Premier League game most of the Champions League games Bayern have gone ahead to be knocked out on either a semi-final or a quarter-final so guys thank you very much for watching in through what are your thoughts on Enzo Fernandez personal terms I agreed with Chelsea then Gapko finally 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 registered as a Liverpool player then there is there is a story of Lionel Messi to go on and really hold another last meeting to agree on the amount on the nature of deal for him with PSG remember there is pressure from Barcelona they want to resign Messi but do they have the money to sign Messi have they solved their financial problems let's wait and see what's going to happen but today we are having very huge games Arsenal is playing Newcastle United is playing Bournemouth then on Wednesday there are the games and on Thursday Chelsea is hosting Man City a game that is going to mean a lot in the season of Chelsea and season of Man City because if Man City is beaten if Man City is beaten by Chelsea they would have let Arsenal go 11 points ahead of them provided Arsenal wins today and United if I know they win today they will be just one point behind them so thank you very much for watching in through I sign out for now see you later Rock and David is my name may God do what he has to do for you I'm out